You're watching Venture Forward, a video series about vehicle-supported adventure, backcountry exploration, and full-time mobile living. Join us as we discover scenic and interesting places both on and off the beaten path. My first night ever in Vermont, as far as I know. I can't remember ever having been in Vermont before, but Chris is leveling the van. We've got a nice little boondocking site. Oh, looks like we've had some people here before. I'm not sure what this is. A cart of some sort. Neat. But this is lush and green. It's beautiful. We're back. We're back on the road. Back on the road. Back on a forest road. Mm -hmm. We got a camp just down the way. And we're, we're walking, walking Finnegan up. right now. Mm -hmm. But um, any guesses what state we're in? That's right, Vermont. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> Internet. <laughs> we're, we're happy to be back out. It was sad leaving your dad and your sister. What an experience to really spend time with your family for the first time when something so serious was going on. I know. I know. I, it was hard leaving. I enjoyed the past few months with mm -hmm. family. It's the longest stint I've had with family in a long time. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Shannon really got to know them too, which I'm grateful for. Yeah. Thank you to um, Henry and Sue. <laughs> it was so lovely getting to know you guys a little bit better. Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday, mid-July, 2022. We're in southeastern Vermont and adventure is afoot. We left my dad's house around midday yesterday and we drove about five hours on the highway up into Vermont. We made it to Green Mountain National Forest outside of Bennington with a little bit of daylight to spare. We literally turned down the very first forest road we encountered to try to find a dispersed campsite for the night. And sure enough, we found this great wooded spot up on the mountain. There was decent cell service, it was quiet and secluded, and there was a well-maintained fire ring that looked recently used. It was a wonderful place to spend the night, and we found it fairly effortlessly. In that regard, I think we got kind of lucky, because although Vermont has a lot of camping opportunities, you still have to drive around and dig a little bit for the good dispersed sites. She's driving behind me in our Winnebago Revel, and we're out doing some sightseeing, and we'd like to get a hike in. Passing through Stratton, Vermont, yeah. and we checked out the Parsonage. the Stratton Parsonage, home furnishings and dry goods, and just across the street there's this old church, stones from a grist mill. And this was a schoolhouse, number five, built in 1851, moved to the site in 1972. Oh wow, you could see the globe. Yep. There's a a message on the blackboard over there. Mm -hmm. Welcome to old schoolhouse number five, built 1851, last used 1939 to 40, renovated 1972 to 1974 by some dedicated residents of Stratton. Vermont, eh? How about Vermont? <laughs> this is lovely. We just pulled off. We think that's Stratton Mountain there. This is might be a place just for internet connectivity. Yeah. Right? It I it doesn't have the best vibe, a lot no. of scrub, but yeah. um, but as far as open sky, there's a lot of that here. Yeah. So I'm gonna to keep in mind. Yeah, I'm gonna test Starlink here. Come down here. Chris, go through the double wall rocks 
On your left? What? Chris, you okay? Christopher Shantz. Are you okay? I don't know. Tell me. Ankle. Did you just fall? I think I rolled it. Right ankle or left ankle? Right. I hope I didn't just blow it. It was so stupid. I, I was minding my step. I remember uh, be, taking great care. I, I was jogging to the camera. Mm -hmm. And I was focused up until about that point where I lifted my head to grab the camera. And right there, that root, yeah. I put my foot down on it sideways and it caused, um, it wrenched it. And the thing is, I heard it. Sorry, love, I'm gonna stop recording, okay? Unless you want me to. No, you can stop. This is Shannon. And just so you know, I did try to offer help multiple times, and he pushed me away multiple times. So I recorded. God, be careful. I stubbornly went about it alone because my tripod offered decent support and um, hopping was fun. Alboro, Vermont. Head southeast on Vermont 9 East toward Ray Hill Road. Verify COVID-19 testing center info before going. Urgent care used to be a pizza hut. Score. <laughs> yeah, but it still smells like pizza too. As it turned out, the pizza hut radiologist left for the evening about five minutes before we walked in. So the folks at the urgent care redirected us to the local ER. So we're in the hospital. They brought him back out in that after x-rays, right? Right. And we are waiting for the radiologist. Yeah, uh, I don't have a verdict yet, but um, that foot's pretty small. And... Yeah. What happened was Chris was um, running back to the camera. We'll probably put a clip in there. This makes it to <laughs> video. And uh, we might spare you the crack. Yeah. But he basically tripped or stepped uh, wrong on a root. My ankle rolled on a root, just like, and um, it made a noise and it hurt. Uh, and, and then it immediately, immediately swelled up. Yeah. So we'll see. I think we're about to get the x-ray results, so we'll find out. Yeah. Nothing I'm more to not, say, really. I'm not, I'm not thrilled, but I'm grateful that you know, I've had all these solo travels and adventures and hiking all these years and haven't had an incident. I just feel lucky yeah. more than anything. Yeah. I'm lucky that you were there with me. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Adventure will be a foot. It'll be about the foot getting better. <laughs> it'll, it'll be about the other foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're at the Vermont Inn Pizza. The only place seem to open this late on a Sunday night post foot breaking. <laughs> I know you don't want to be on camera, but the doctor said that literally said that I won't be driving. So I don't know. I don't have a solution for this. But um, in the meantime, we eat pizza. I've got, uh, I've got some a brace on my foot, I've got crutches, and I have pizza. And Shannon. Yeah.
You're probably asking, now what? And to be honest, I have no idea. But first, I count my blessings, because I was out there in the field alone for five years. For the early years, I didn't have health insurance because it was too expensive. I'm very lucky that this didn't happen a long time ago, and I'm also very lucky to have Shannon and that she was there with me when this happened. We have health insurance, a comfortable van, I'm otherwise in good health. I have a lot to be grateful for. This is a minor hiccup and I'm going to get through it. The doctor called it a ballerina's fracture, which is a broken bone usually experienced by dancers. We will make an appointment with a specialist ASAP because I want my foot back. But as I'm sitting here, we're still trying to figure out where that will be. This summer rain feels really nice, and sitting with my foot in the stream also feels great. Ah, oh, it doesn't get much better than this. Well, it gets a little bit better than this. But this isn't so bad. Hiking wasn't really working for me today, so it's 7.30 p.m. and I'm in the passenger seat. I have my crutches and Shannon and I are just exploring a nearby track. Happy to place the camera. I just don't think your audience would be happy for me to place you, your camera. <laughs> you do just as good a job, I'm sure of it. So mossy and green and fresh. This isn't a trail, this is where we're going to turn around. Okay, but what's that sign down there? Uh, probably snowmobile or something. Just those, the flies here, they circle. Yeah. They circle your head. They don't land or anything. Just circle your head. It's a pretty steep hill. We parked down there at that campsite and saw this fur. We don't know where it goes. Nope. So I decided, what a great opportunity to use my crutches. <laughs> Because there's no opportunities now. No. You just... No good time to use crutches these days. What do you think we're going to find up here? I don't know. I just thought there might be a, another fire ring or something. Looks kind of like a dead end. It's disappointing. This is why you don't drive up these spurs if you have a feeling that they just kind of fizzle Peter? out. Yeah. Like this one is done. Well, we're not going to explore the whole track because this is just an impromptu thing. It goes on for a lot further. We're running out of daylight and we left the van all opened up, the yeah. windows open and everything. <laughs> but I have the track that we did drive on um, Gaia GPS and I'll just mark this spot where we're turning around. I'm going to have to come back and explore it again another day. Yeah gonna serve you well to have tough armpits in life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my boyfriend, his armpits. Mm. <laughs> Toughest I've ever seen. I'm going around to the driver's side, bud.
Hi, uh, I was in on Sunday at the ER uh, diagnosed with um, a fracture in my foot and uh, they referred me to you guys. Uh, I'd like to make an appointment uh, for a specialist to have it looked at. What's your name? Uh, Chris Schantz, S-H-O-N-T-Z. Um, Friday at 2 o'clock, Shannon? Uh, I think yeah. that works. Yeah, yeah, we can, um, we can do that. All right. Okay. Excellent. Friday at 2, two o'clock. Thank you so much for your help. You, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We've had Starlink for a few months now. We picked it up back in Utah before we traveled east to Pennsylvania. And this week in Vermont marks the very first time that we've relied on the service solely for internet. We're in Green Mountain National Forest in southern Vermont at a designated dispersed camping area, and there is no cell service here. No Verizon, T-Mobile, or AT&T, but what we do have is a sweeping view of the sky. So based on these ideal circumstances, we decided to make this spot our base camp for the week, and Starlink has been great. There's already a lot of hype about Starlink, so I don't want to gush about it too much, but it's hard not to when it opens up opportunities to go further into the backcountry and do your job, whatever it might be, whether you're a content creator or a consultant for the IT industry. Before we got Starlink, this lovely spot wouldn't have been a viable place to spend the work week. On average, we're getting about 120 down and 10 up. Streaming Netflix, no problem. Teleconferencing for Shannon has been no problem. I was on an hour-long Zoom meeting yesterday with no interruptions and great quality. I've been using my iPhone with AT&T over Wi-Fi to call hospitals to make appointments for my foot. And I've been able to do my email, enjoy web browsing, and social media with no trouble whatsoever. It's very fast. With all that being said, there is one consideration you should have for Starlink, and that is it demands a sweeping view of the sky, it has a wide field of view, and is very sensitive to obstructions. A tree branch that's low on the horizon, way off in the distance, that's waving in the wrong place is enough to cause a two-second interruption. I might be exaggerating to make my point, but a passing aircraft or a fluttering moth might cause a hiccup in your Zoom meeting. Not to mention, right now, as of July 2022, the service is still relatively new, so it's bound to have some growing pains of its own. Although Starlink seems to be able to get the job done most of the time, if connectivity is mission critical for you and your work, it is wise to have a cellular hotspot to fall back on. The Starlink kit has power demand similar to that of a laptop computer. And it's not 12 volt, it does require an AC inverter and a robust power system to run for an extended period of time in your RV or overland vehicle. The Starlink service is evolving quickly, but I can say right now in its current form, I love it. And I totally recommend it if you wanna to try to get work done off grid. V-17. It was supposed to mark the start of a new adventure, and I suppose it has, but this isn't exactly what I had in mind. I've got a doctor's appointment on Friday, after which I should have a better idea of what the recovery is going to look like. But I could use your suggestions. We're looking for a place in Vermont to call home base while I heal and get through this. We're not sure what we're looking for yet either a camping pad for the van with a 30 amp hookup and we'll just continue to live out of the van or a furnished apartment for only like a couple months. We're not looking for freebies or handouts but it's hard to find a place just for a couple months and we don't even know what our timeline is right now. All I know is it'd be helpful to be somewhere where I can stay off the ankle with peace of mind and get through this. I'm setting up a very temporary email address, vermont at venture4wd.com, that for July of 2022, Shannon and I will monitor looking for your suggestions or any leads you have on places that we might be able to stay. But rest assured, if we don't get any leads, everything will be okay and we'll get through this. I just thought I'd ask, 
since some of you might have some ideas. We relocated to this great RV campground near town to be closer to my doctor's appointment, which I just got back from. They said that I won't need surgery, but it will take six weeks for the bone to heal, and they gave me this really cool boot. I am allowed to put weight on it, and I only need my crutches for my own personal comfort, and I am allowed to drive when I regain flexibility in that ankle. Now as far as doing my more usual physically active stuff, that's probably going to take closer to the six week mark. I'm going to call that a wrap for the week, but just as a reminder, my detailed GPS data is available to Patreon subscribers, and I've got my points of interest available on the Thatch travel app for iOS and Android. I'll put links to Patreon and Thatch in the description for this video. Thanks for following along, and I'll see you next week.